Hello and welcome back. Yes, it's the Trumpeter 132nd scale AV8B Harrier 2 Plus. Yes, so, so far I've primed the Aries uh, replacement cockpit. Mm, pardon the ice cream van behind me. Yes, what I normally do is I use my normal um, Tamiya primer, which is either, well, one of the two greys anyway, or whatever I've got left in the, in the actual stash. But anyway, point of note on this entire build will be this book. It is the, the Hawkins, or Duke Hawkins, um, and it goes through the AV-8Bs, um, the GR7, the GR9, all on Tondras. And to be honest, it's not that expensive to buy either. But no, you also get some really good po photos as well. Close-ups, and that's from the cockpit and the carriage, you name it, it's in there. So, as I said, it's been primed. So I'm going to be using Hataka's Light Ghost Grey to do the actual cockpit. Now, when I do this, I heavily thin the paint, as per normal. And all I do is to go through the center masses, or the bigger masses, which I'm seeing, well, which we're looking at there. So it's leaving um, a lot of the uh, primer paint still in within, let's say, those rails there for the ejector seat. For that reason, I'm new, well, I'm doing that, is to give it a bit of shadow. Um, so once everything's in, you just get that sort of like different contrast of not color, but the brightness of it. So shadowing, highlights, that's what it's all about. So, do you know what? I wish that ice cream man would just fuck off. Anyway, um, when you start doing the actual painting itself, uh, like I said in the previous bit there, you sort of like, you, you concentrate in on like the centers of either panels and stuff like that. And again, once you've done that sort of like part, you can sort of like go back a bit and then spray the entire part. And that, hopefully that will give you what you really need as in to do with the shadowing. And that's basically what I've done here. If at any point you think, oh, I need to do a bit more, go back and do some more. It's that easy. So once with that's done, I can now do a bit more of the detail painting. And that is using my trusty uh, wet palette and my Vallejo white tops. Now with this, just, Take your time, that's all you've got to do. And have a good pair of glasses or a pair of good eyes. My eyes are shot. So all I do is use my big geeky Joey Deacon um, binoculars um, and just heavily thin the paint down and just relax and just paint away. That's the most important thing, relax. So with the detail painting out of the way, it was time for some dry brushing. Yes, for this I used a royal light grey, which is quite a bright grey actually, as it were, if you can call it that. Um, and really all you're doing is you're very, very carefully going over um, the detail parts which you've just painted, and the paint will hopefully go on to the, the raised parts. And again, it will just give you that sort of like that worn in look you know, the pilot's been in for hours and hours and hours, or it's been on ops for, for weeks and weeks. And hopefully it'll just give you that sort of like, that sort of like, you know, the worn in look without looking utterly devastated. Yeah, well, that's, yeah. Anyway, um, again, you're just gonna do it all over. And the ejector seat, as in and the tub, um, the sidewalls, and also um, the HUD and with oh speaking of the hud and the control panel there you go nothing escapes the dry brushing so yeah it's a good way of detailing up with absolute minimal effort so yeah Yeah. 
So, really the last thing I need to do for the cockpit wise is to, well, basically finish off the main painting of uh, the ejector seat. Now, as per what I've got in my uh, references on that book, um, I'm basically just going over the ejector seat, painting silver or using bolt gun, was it? No, chain mail, sorry, from Citadel Paints, and then painting um, the seat cushions, headrest, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So basically, in a nutshell, that is most, if not all, of the main painting done. It's now going on to say detailing and a bit of weathering um, and that's pretty much it. Speaking of detail painting, yes, all I'm doing here is just going over the more prominent switches um, which are evident on the actual Aries uh, resin replacement and again as per the actual book itself. Not, I'm not doing absolutely every single one of them because not every single one of them needs to be done but it's just enough to give it that bit of bling into the cockpit. So speaking of weathering, um, yeah, let's start it. So all I'm doing is using a uh, light gray and using these uh, brushes and this to take it off, which is excellent stuff. Yes. So, just dip your old wick in the old uh, ink pot, ooh, uh, and go for it. All you're doing is just popping it on the actual uh, panels themselves. So the actual um, wash goes around everywhere, okay? And then what you can do is with a Morrison brush with those uh, X20 thinners or the enamel thinners, you can just take the excess off. So all you're left with is the gray panel line wash in the panels this is good so once that's done i'll go with the dark dark wash now this is what i found quite a universal wash um and i pretty much use it on everything now um but yeah it's not too dark not too light it's just about right for my needs and i have special ones so again you just dip it in let the actual compiling reaction work it goes around everywhere and once you're done, once you're finished, once you're happy, you can come along and take it off. So yeah, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Sorry, I stole your line there, mate. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Right, with a thicker brush then, uh, moistened with that uh, thinners, I basically went round and just taking off everything that I wanted to and leaving just enough to make it a bit sort of like lived in, a bit of grubby and, and yeah. But you don't really want to leave it like someone's really got some really bad runs or diarrhea or whatever, like a Tony Hart splatter painting. You just want to take off uh, well, leave as, you know, something that's, you know, not completely shitty. But anyway, huh, I'm happy with that. So I am going to leave it and carry on with it. So again, there we go. It's uh, yeah, a bit dirty, a bit lived in, operational uses and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I'm happy with that, but I'll come back to it. I've got a tiny bit of detail painting to do. So there, oh, there's the instrument panel. 
um, the shiny bits or the like the LCD panels or the um, HSDs, I think they're called, on the Harrier. Um, they were done with the old nail trick, and hopefully I shall be able to show you that at a later date. But more importantly, um, to actually get the cockpit in, um, you've got to do some cutting and, as I found out, some sanding. Um, as per the instructions of the um, Ares cockpit, you do need to get rid of the, the shroud or what it is for the instrument panel. And one thing I found out to actually get the thing to fit, you've got to take that rail off, which will be for the canopy, and also sand it back quite a lot. But more of that on the next video. So, oh yeah, I forgot some dry brushing. So yeah, those are just the um, side panels. Um, and yeah, I forgot. Never mind. But anyway, enjoy. Okie dokie, right, what I'm going to show you now is I basically use um, this for the HUD or the projectional lens, whatever it is for the HUD, if that's the right thing. Basically, I've mixed a uh, medium sea grey with some clear green and some retarder. And basically, I'm just doing blobs and working it around. Now, it is going to take time to dry, um, hence the reason why I've used the retarder. And also, it's a lot easier to move around the actual space without getting it all over the place. Now, one thing I did find is the ejector handle for the ejector seat. It's very flimsy and I broke it. So, what I'm doing is I'm using some 0.5 soldering um, to actually do the actual grab handle which will send the pilot into outer space. So yeah, just a very, very quick fix. Oh look, it's the cockpit again. But no, what I've also done is, is I've done the actual seat harnesses and I hate seat harnesses for the passion because I'm no good at it. Yeah, so we're pretty much ready now to stick or start, oh look, sticking things together. So for the moment, all I'm gonna be doing is just putting the sidewalls on. Um, because like I've said, there is going to be some sanding done and I might have to do some sanding on the actual outside of the Aries cockpit. So, just using quite a generous amount of super glue. Um, all I'm using for that is some bog standard Loctite um, the super glue. And once that's on, I'll spread it around a bit and then I can put the sidewall on and it'll stick. Hopefully. Oh look, it's stuck. Wow. So yeah, all I did was glue the other side on. Simples. Mm. Now, um, the kit parts, um, are they any good? Yeah, yeah, they're okay. They're not brilliant, but they're okay. The reason why I say this is because if you can't get hold of um, the Aries cockpit for whatever reason, um, it's no great sort of like shakes, it's no dramas. You can still do a really good representation of the AV8B cockpit. You really can. It just needs a bit of careful painting, maybe some a little bit of wiring if you so wish. It's entirely up to you. But the Aries um, aftermarket is absolutely exceptional. So there. Yeah, right. That's pretty much the cockpit done. And I shall see you on the next video. Cool, Pip.